every one of us needs to have a song because God is doing great things in each and every one of our lives. My song is going to be different than Pastor Lee's song. It's going to be different from your song and your song and your song. Only you can sing the song specifically in the tune with the lyric that Jesus has written for you. When I look back and I look back in them partying days and them drunk days and them drug days, some of you don't know anything about that. Right. Only I can sing that. Amen. So find your voice in Jesus. Amen. He's not just some God that's far off and doesn't care about us. He is doing things every single second on your behalf. You may not even see it. You may not even know it. But that's where faith comes in. Amen. He's a good, good father. Amen. 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 I love you, Jesus. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. All right, let me see them. You know I'm going to ask this. So I want, I want someone to hold it up even before I ask the next time. Let me see your Bible. Your Bible, a book, a phone app. Amen. This is the Word of God. This is not a prop. This is not something that sits on your table. This is the living word of God. This is the sword. This is how you fight your battles. And this is why a lot of us are being so defeated, so lost, so down, so depressed. Because we're not reading our word. We have no idea the promise. If you knew the promises in this book. Right. If you knew the promise. If you believed the promises in this book. Amen. The glory of the Lord would be filling this room right now. I would put down this microphone. And we would have a Holy Ghost party. And name. Amen. If you will, open up your Bibles to Matthew 21, Amen. verse 18, and Ecclesiastes 3.1. It is an honor to be standing here today. Amen. God is so amazing. Amen. Matthew 21, 18 through 19, and Ecclesiastes 3.1. Matthew 21, 18. In the morning, as he was returning to the city, he became hungry. Mm -hmm. And seeing a fig tree by the wayside, he went to it and found nothing on it but only leaves. And he said to it, may no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. Uh -huh. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. For everything there is a season right. and a time for every matter under heaven. Amen. I want to encourage you today to know your season. Amen. Life changes. Things happen. We can get overwhelmed, but we have got to know what season we are in. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. Thanks for caring enough to come down and to save us, God. Thank you for molding us and shaping us every day, every service by your moving of your spirit and the hearing of your word, God. Let your heart, let your word, God, reach our hearts, God. Plant this seed in good soil and may it produce fruit that lasts. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Tell your neighbor, know your season. We all know the seasons. Winter, spring, summer. Amen. We know those. And it is important to know which season you are in. If you are traveling into Abu Dhabi in the month of August, you need to know the season. You do not want to show up in Abu Dhabi in August wearing a parka. 
<laughs> and if you are traveling to Switzerland or Denmark, you have got to know your seasons. You cannot be walking around Switzerland in the winter time in a bikini. So it is very important that you know your season. And it is the same thing in the spiritual sense. In Matthew 21, it's the Passover celebration. And Jesus enters Jerusalem on a donkey. It's the triumphal entry. People are throwing their clothes on the ground, their coats, they're waving palms. Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! We love you! Welcome to our city! Yes! Jesus is here! It's a big celebration for this Passover. Right. He gets to the temple and finds money changers in there. They're selling these animals. The, the house of God has been turned into a den of robbers. Right. He turns over the tables. He chases those robbers outside of the temple. Uh -huh. And he leaves Jerusalem and he goes off to Bethany. Right. The next morning, as he travels back to Jerusalem, he sees this fig tree in leaf. This fig tree, if it has leaves on it, everybody knows if this fig tree has leaves on it, then it's got fruit. Right, man. The fruit will come and then the leaves signals that it is ready, that you can come over, inspect this tree, and pick a fig from it. Right. He goes over. The season isn't right. But this tree is an early bloomer. So it's got early leaves and it should have early fruit. He inspects it. He's got this expectation. The word of God says he was hungry. So he had an expectation. He inspects it and he is immediately right. let down. Amen. There are many things in this world that masquerade as the real thing but end up letting us down. Right. Have you ever seen money on the sidewalk and you think that you have found money only to pick it up and it's fake? <laughs> Somebody has given you a new Gucci bag. Fake. Somebody got one C. <laughs> What about our spiritual walk with God? Uh -huh. We can walk around thinking that we've got all got it together. Everybody looks so nice Friday morning. Everybody looks so holy. Amen. But what if we inspect a little bit deeper? Right. What season are you in? This tree was all leaf, no fruit. All expectation, but it did not deliver. What season are you in? Amen. You are created to be fruitful. God has made us in a special way, each and every one of us, that he has a plan and a purpose for us to bear fruit, not for you, but for those around you. We are supposed to go and make disciples and preach the word and teach the word. That is what that fruit is for. And if we are out of season, if we are not bearing that fruit, we will be no good for the master's work. Amen? Amen. So the Passover celebration, the excitement, the crowds, the singing, it was all a show. Uh -huh. These are the same people in a few days that are going to be saying, crucify him. Uh -huh. Come on. All show. Right. God's house was turned into a den of robbers. All show. Mm -hmm. Lots of action, lots of bustle, but no righteousness, no fruit. Right. Just like trees, we go through spiritual seasons. Yeah. And we need to know which season that we are in. Are you in a dry season? Mm -hmm. David, 
Psalm 63 says, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Amen. He was in a dry season. This is when you don't feel God. He's nowhere around. You don't see him. You don't feel him. You don't hear him. And you just feel. Right. Man. It's Friday again. Uh -huh. Come on, I wish that bald head guy would stop talking. <laughs> Thank you, sister. <laughs> she always laughs at my jokes. <laughs> we are dry inside. Suddenly, our life experience doesn't match up with what we know about God. I know God will never leave me or forsake me. I know that's in there. Uh -huh. But why do I feel like this? Uh -huh. I know he loves me. I know he died for me. We just sang that song. He uh -huh. thinks the world of me. But why am I so lonely? That's right. I don't hear his voice. I don't want to read the Bible. I don't want to go to church. I only go because if I don't, Pastor Jay will call asking what's going on. And I don't want to talk to Pastor Jay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> because I'm dry inside. I'm going through the motions and nothing seems the same. You've got to realize when you are in a dry place. You just can't sit there. You've got to first realize what's going on and then you have got to reach out for God. Even if you don't believe it, even if you don't feel like it, you have got to reach out for God. Amen. Confess, repent. This happens when we get stuck in a rut or we get caught up in sin over and over and we just start getting dull to the things of God. Right. Come back to God. David said that he was in a dry and weary land where there is no water. But right after that, he says, so I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. He didn't stop going to the temple. When we get dry, we fall away and stop going to church. David is saying, I'm in a dry and weary place, but I'm still going to go to the house of God because I know that that is where I see the move of God. And that anything is going to happen, that is where it's going to happen. That is why the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of each other. As we come together, there is something. If I am in a dry and weary place, the Holy Ghost in you that living water can splash over on me and I can get start feeling the move and the power and the love of God again so David says I'm in a dry place but in the sanctuary I'm going to see you and I'm going to behold your power and your glory and your majesty and your words going to start coming at my heart again in Jesus name do not give up on God God. Because your steadfast love is better than life. Amen. My lips will praise you. Amen. So even in a dark, dry place, find your song. Find your voice. Find your praise. Amen. God has done great things for you. Just because I'm dry now, then I'm going to look back and I'm going to say, oh, I remember when God did that and he delivered me from that and he brought me out of that. There is always something to praise God about. Amen. Continue to seek God. His arm is not too short. He can and will reach out to you. Amen. Amen. Joel 2.23 says, Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. We serve a God that it doesn't matter 
what season you are in. He's outside of time. He's outside of seasons. He's the one that created the sun, the stars, and the moons to dictate the time and the seasons. So he's outside of that. And he can give you the latter rain, which is late and it shouldn't really be happening, or he can give you the early rain. It doesn't matter if you are believing God and seeking his word. Amen? Delight yourself in the Lord. Meditate on his word both day and night. Psalm 1-3 says, he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither in all that he does. He prospers. When you are saturated in meditating on the word of God, you are always ready. That co-worker with the problem, the husband that is just bothering you, you won't just go slap him upside his head, but you will be ready with the fruit of peace, patience and peace. And you will still love him even if he's being a knucklehead, even when you know he's being wrong. But God will work in you while he works in him. Amen? Amen. But some of you may not be in a dry season. Uh -huh, right. Are you in a waiting season? Ask your neighbor, are you waiting? Amen. You could be waiting for a, a godly husband. A go uh -oh. You want me to change the sermon, Lord? Godly husbands, amen. You could be waiting on a godly woman. You could be waiting on a job. You could be waiting on that promise. You could be waiting on that child. You could be waiting on whatever it is that you know what you are waiting for. Right. Waiting is not easy, but we must wait. Psalm 37, seven says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Right. Yes. Genesis 37 tells the story of Joseph. He's this young boy. He's having these dreams about ruling over his brothers. Yeah. So he goes and tells them, you're going to bow down to me. Yes. So they get angry, throw him in the pit, send him off into slavery. He gets sent over to Egypt. And then his father is mourning him because his father thinks he's dead. That's how chapter 37 ends. And then chapter 38 begins like this. It happened at the time that Judah went down from his brothers and turned aside to a certain Adulamite whose name was Hira. Out of nowhere comes this story about his brother Judah. And then it goes on to talk about Judah and his sons and them getting married and then them dying, and then Tamar, the, the daughter-in-law, going off, and then the father, Judah, having children with Tamar. Mm -hmm. What in the world, God? What happened to Joseph? I want to get back to Joseph. Why would you do that? Because time goes on. Right. Amen. Yes. Just because you are stuck in your jail because you are waiting on this one thing that only I can see the rest of the world is still living their life people are still getting blessed people are still getting married people are still and you are just sitting here waiting and waiting what is going on God Betsy Childs Howard says this about waiting for God the goal of this season is not that I should learn my lesson so that I don't have to wait anymore mm -hmm. that's me I love it I'm waiting and I got I'm going through this thing okay God I want to learn this lesson so that I can move on mm -hmm. but she's saying that is not God's goal uh -huh. God wants me to learn how to wait so that I can wait well Ask your neighbor, are you waiting well? 
even if my waiting continues for the rest of my life. While my plan is to keep a chipper attitude and show God that I'm a good student so he will bring my waiting to a close, God wants something even better for me. Rather than end my waiting, he wants to bless my waiting. God wants me to wait well, to still have faith, to know that even if he doesn't, he can. And even in the midst of not having this thing, I have him. Amen. We are so caught up in this thing that I am missing and I'm waiting on this job. You know, we got people crying and waiting and praying for a job. And in the next room, we've got someone scared to death crying because they just got fired. <laughs> I'm waiting on a husband. I can't stand the husband I got. <laughs> when all the time, he just wants us to wait well. I wait, I don't have this thing, but I trust you. I know your word, I know the promises in the Bible, God. And in the meantime, I'm gonna praise you. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna praise you for the things that you've already given me. Over and over and over, all of these things that you've given me through the years. And this is just something else that in due season, you will provide in Jesus' name. Psalm 5, 3 says, In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will prepare a, prepare a prayer and a sacrifice for you and watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. Hallelujah. So even as Joseph is in Potiphar's house, in the pit, in jail, God is always with him. He didn't get deliverance immediately. He waited and waited and waited and waited. And we wait and wait and wait and we just get depressed and depressed and depressed. Uh -huh. Joseph was waiting and waiting and waiting, realized that God was always watching, always with him. And he kept going the other way. He kept getting promotions. He was running the jail. He was running Potiphar's house. He ended up running the whole country because he waited well. Right. Learn to wait well. Mm -hmm. Learn to know your season. Praise God. How long did David wait to be king? How long did Abraham wait for that child? How long did Hannah wait for that child? The Bible shows us that waiting on God is always worth it. Yes. What's your option? The only option is to wait on God and watch it turn out well. Choosing anything else is foolish. Know your season. But you may not be in a dry spell. You may not be in a waiting season. Are you in a grinding season? Ask your neighbor, are you grinding? You on the grind? Busy, 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 busy. Work, 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 work. Amen, girl. Work. She knows that. We are so busy. This world wants us to chase around, chasing money, chasing women, chasing this, chasing fame. That should not be our lifestyle. If we're chasing anything, we need to chase God. Right. I want to run after God. I want to catch God. I want to seek his heart. I want to seek his face. Yeah. Because that is the only thing worth catching. Amen? Amen. Everybody is so busy. If you find yourself in this busy season, mm -hmm. the key to making it through is seeking God's purpose and direction every single morning. Hallelujah. God. 
I got to go to work. I've got to go to shopping. I've got sister so and so needs a phone call. I got. What do you want me to do before I even put my feet on the floor, God? Prioritize my day. What should I say? Where should I go? What do I need to do? Tell your neighbor there is a God, and you ain't Him. We are trying to control everything. Masters of our own destiny. And we're failing over and over and over. Psalm 95, 4 says, In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountain are also his. Right. The whole entire world is his, and it's in his hands. We are fumbling over our keys. We drop our phone. How many times do we drop a phone and break a phone? And we're trying to juggle life and kids and marriage and business and this and that. Slow down. Yes, baby, it's a crying shame. We should be crying. We get so busy and we just drift away from God and then we end up in a dry season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> know your season. But maybe you're not too busy. Maybe you're not dry. Uh -huh. Maybe you're in a trial and test season. Yeah. Bad things happen to everybody. That's right. Amen. Yes. Life happens to everybody. Amen. When you are in the middle of this test, this trial, this situation, you may not understand what is going on. You may not understand why, but you need to remember that God is always in control. Amen. Nothing yes. can harm you. Nothing can happen to you without God knowing and his approval. Right. Hold on to this test. It may be something that you think you conquered years ago. Woo! Uh -huh. I'm over that lust thing. Uh -huh. Ooh, hello. Oh, man. Oh, I haven't cussed in years. Beep! When you face trials, it is going to happen. Prepare yourself. Gird up your loins, the Bible says. Prepare yourself with the word of God. It does not mean that God has left you and he's forsaken you and he doesn't know anything about you. During test and trial, he is preparing you. He's getting way of things that you don't need. He's preparing you, and he's also preparing the situation to get you ready when you get there. Amen? If you need comfort, let God comfort you. If you need strength, let him strengthen you. If you need wisdom, the Bible says, ask and it will be given to you. Amen. As hard as the tests and trials may be, allow God to be God. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4 17 says, For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, stop looking at the things that you see, but to the things that are unseen. Amen. For the things that are seen are transient, they are passing away, they're seasonal. Amen. But the things that are unseen Amen. are eternal. Amen. Get your priorities and your eyes off of this world and on to the Lord. Amen. Fix your thoughts on heavenly things. God understands your temptation. He understands your suffering. He understands your pain. And he understands your weaknesses. So let him into your situation. Maybe you're in a spiritual warfare season on God. Spiritual warfare. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We think it's that employer. We think it's that spouse. We think it's this. We think, no. 
There are spiritual things that are going on, and we have got to be in tune with the Word of God to know exactly what is going on. Amen. Spiritual warfare is part of being a Christian. Right. If the enemy sees that you are important to God, if he sees that you are going to be used by God, that God has plans for you, he does not want that. So he is going to attack you in some way. I don't know. You know what the spiritual thing is going on. You have got to know. First of all, rely on God. Oh, God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God is greater. Thank you for this test, God. Thank you for this trial. God, I don't know what you have for me. The enemy's here. You know, sometimes we stay in a spiritual battle because we refuse to fight. We don't know the power that we have because we're not reading the Bible. We don't take authority. The Bible says that you can speak to a mountain and it will go jump in the ocean. Some of you, some of you need to start speaking to your mountain. Some of us need to uh, submit to God. That's right. Some of us are so stubborn. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Some of us need to resist the devil. Amen. Right. Some of us need to flee youthful lust. Uh -huh. The list goes on and on, but we just... Like we're a punching bag. And the enemy is like... Easy, easy, easy. When Jesus is saying, trust me, speak my word, Amen. read my word, trust in the spirit and grow up. Amen. We need to fight. Amen. We need to fight. Protect yourself. Allow God to be your shield during a spiritual battle. Amen. Last but not least, there's a happy season. Amen. Oh, I just got married. Uh -huh. oh, honeymoon. Oh, I can't wait for Friday. Oh, man. I can't wait to go to church again. Oh, I can't wait to teach somebody a Bible study. Oh, man. I just got three job offers. Oh my goodness. There are seasons of abundant life. Amen. There are seasons of blessing. Right. We forget that. Oh, I'm dry. Oh, I'm waiting. Oh, I'm spiritual attack. And we forget that seasons change. That's right. The Bible says there's a season for everything. Amen. A time for sickness, a time for health, a time for death, a time to plant, a time to sow, a time to reap, a time for everything. That's right. Don't get stuck in a season. Amen. Stop longing for the good old days. Oh, 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 this is 2019. I sure wish it was 2016. Oh, life was so good back then. The Bible says that that's not wise. That is not wise. Say not, why were the former days better than these? For it is not from wisdom that you ask this. Isaiah 43 says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. When we are happy, when God is blessing us, we need to take advantage of this situation. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Amen. Sing your song. Amen. Find your voice. Psalm 145 says, I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Amen. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. 
Praise God. Every day I will praise you. That's right. Praise you and extol your name forever and ever. The Bible sings to you if you allow it. Amen. The Bible changes your heart right. if you allow it. Right. It will guide you from season to season through season. He will not leave you. He will tell you exactly when to wait, when to get up, when to fight, when to trust me. That's right. When to move left, when to go right. It doesn't matter that uh, people are losing. A thousand may fall to my right and up to my left, losing jobs and death. You do not have to fear what the world fears. That's right. When you are relying on the power of God. Lord. It does not matter what season you are in. 2 Timothy 4.2 says, preach the word. Be ready. Amen. What? Speak up. Know your word. Amen. Be ready. Jesus. And. You are called to be ready in season when the opportunity presents itself and you have everything right and you know, oh, I'm on the schedule to preach next Friday and this and that. Everything's in order and out of season. Ah, life is going crazy. I need you to preach. Yes, sir. Amen. You need to be ready. Amen. The enemy is prowling around like a roaring lion yes. seeking whom he can devour. Right. Yes. We have got to know which season. It may be lion hunting season. Uh -huh. I got one amen. amen. Nobody wants to hunt that lion. <laughs> but I was talking about the lion of Judah. That's right. We don't even know which lion it is. Yeah. There's a lion outside, the Bible says. I can't go outside. And you don't even know what lion it is. <laughs> I stand at the door knocking Amen. hoping to go into whoever enters. Oh, there's a lion out there <laughs> seeking to destroy me. You got the wrong lion because you're not reading your word. Amen. What season are you in? How are you going to be more than a conqueror in your waiting season? Uh -huh. In your test and trial season as we stand. God is equipping you. He has got a purpose for you. He has got a plan for you. Amen. And we just give up when, when the root starts drying. We give up at the, the first sign of adversity right. knowing that we are called to persevere that these things are going to happen none of this is unusual and it's not only happening to you it's happening to each and every one of us we know that That's right. and we still still react in the wrong way mm -hmm. we have got to grow up church Amen. Amen. One strong amen. It was like, mm, amen. I got to grow up. I'll grow up when you grow some hair, Pastor. I heard you in the back. I know what you said. God loves us. He wants you to grow regardless of the season. Wherever you're planted, he wants you to grow. Joseph, I don't care if you're in the jail, I'm going to grow you. I don't care if you're in Potiphar's house, I'm going to grow you. Hallelujah. I don't care if you're in Abu Dhabi, I'm going to grow you. I don't care if you have a job, I'm going to grow you. I don't care if you don't have a job, I'm going to grow you. Hallelujah. He's outside of the seasons. And all he wants to do is watch you grow. We talked about him being a good father. He wants his children to grow. He gives us apostles, pastors, evangelists, uh, prophets, and teachers yes. 
to mature us so the word of God and the spirit of God will go wash over us and we get it like oh aha I get it Hallelujah. I can be more than a conqueror even when I'm waiting even when I'm lonely Hallelujah. I can wait well because I have you in here with me Lord, change my mindset, change my point of view. That if you tell me to wait, God, I will wait. Your promises are sure, they're true. It's yes and amen. So when it's dark, and when I'm falling, and when I'm failing, and when I'm dry, and when I'm happy, Remind me that it doesn't matter. There is a season for everything. But you hold the seasons in your hand. You've created these things specifically specifically for me. In the winter time, everything seems dead. Trees lose their leaves and everything just seems cold and bare. But during that season, the root system is getting stronger and going deeper to find water. Hallelujah. There's a purpose for that. There's a purpose for forest fires. There's a purpose for spring. There's a purpose for everything under heaven. Yes. Stop losing your faith. Stop losing your religion over small things that we can see and start looking to the things that we cannot see. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Jesus, remind me that you hold time and space in your hand. Remind me that you hold me in your heart, God. That I am the apple of your eye. Jesus, get me through this dry season when I, I can't feel you. We're a land that is dry and weary and has no water, God. But in your sanctuary, I'm going to see the power of your might. The glory of the Lord. God. Shining, God, through the faces of my brothers and my sisters when I feel so cold and alone. But that smile and that hug, God, is exactly what I need from your people. Lord, what season am I in? Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the waiting. Thank you, God, for your presence, Lord. Minister to my heart, God, in whatever season that I am in, God. You're calling me to grow, God. Jesus, let this word be planted in every heart. Today I proclaim, God, every heart is good ground in here today. Every mind is good soil, God. That there's revival and restoration in this place today. There's forgiveness in this place, God. We submit ourselves to you, God. We humble ourselves to you. You are Lord over all. You are Lord of all. I am nothing. I am nothing. I am nothing without you. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, God, for the many seasons of my life. Thank you, God, for the cold and the hot and the rain and the latter rain and the early rain because you are always on time. God, I will not weary in doing good because in due season, in due season, Exactly what you have for me, God. Hallelujah. In due season. I praise you. And I honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.